at six, and we have and we have Pike here. So um, I'll call this uh, special meeting of the Hyde Park Select Board. Where are we? No whew, November 29th um, at six o'clock to order. Um, I don't think do we have do we have anybody else here? There's probably. Uh, Greenmont Access is here. Uh, David is online with Bretton and you and me and Roland and Brian are in the meeting room. Gotcha. Okay. That's it. Uh, all right. Why don't we uh, let's start with uh, with Pike in the center road. And I think Brian, I'll let you I'll let you start because you're the you're our picture taker in person here. Yes, uh, I'm unmuted now. Can everyone hear me? Yes. <laughs> Did you get Thanks the pictures for... I sent you? I, I was just looking at them, yes. Um, and you can see that uh, I placed a quarter down there on the on the ground with some of the, uh, just to get an idea of some of the divots so I could uh, show the other yeah. ones. I'm not sure. I had I didn't go up there today to see uh, what the um, roads look like up there now, if you'll be able to uh, see them. I drove through today and it, it was you hard. I, I, I'm just, come, you know, just so everyone knows, I'm, I was just coming home from vacation. I had my whole family with me and I, so anyway, I drove through it, but it was, the road was wet and there was a lot of snow on the road. I couldn't see a ton, but I could see a little bit of evidence of some of what you're talking about. I think I, think I have a good idea of what, um, what's going on, but um, I don't know if you want me to. Um, yeah, your opinion, your opinion on it. Sure. Yeah. So. So um, what can happen with asphalt? So asphalt is, um, is, is obviously aggregates uh, and there's, um, it's a specific design um, with, a, with a grain size distribution from the, you know, the biggest size stones, which are in the top course asphalt is, is nominal half inch and it, and it, and it goes down to, to find sand, um, and and the idea is that you know, it, it, you know, it fills all the voids, um, and sometimes what can happen um, uh, is every once in a while, uh, for some reason, it the um, it'll what will happen is what you call segregation of the mix, meaning, um, and this is when it's still hot. Uh, meaning that the um, the mixing didn't something happened with the mixing um, and the 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 fines kind of um, get separated out from from the coarse grains um, and it's not uncommon for that to happen. There's um, there's ways that you can um, when they when they notice it that they can fix it. Um, sometimes they'll go back over it with the paver. Um, or if they don't really think it's that bad, um, and they think it's just one um, load, and the plant, you know, realize the issue, that they'll keep going. Um, uh, it, it, uh, um, I don't see it too too often. Um, I guess it happens more often these big drum plants um, where the mix is uh, um, bat batched into these giant silos um, in the morning. And then you and you draw out of them as the day goes. Um, so that's what I think is is happening a little bit is a little bit of the segregation of the mix. Um, uh, I now um, is that a problem uh, to be to be determined? Uh, how big of a problem is it is to be determined? Um, if it's just a minor segregation on the on the very top of the of the asphalt. Um, shouldn't be much of a concern other than you know maybe a little bit of a um um rumbliness um not as smooth of a surface um we're, we were using half inch uh type three half inch nominal grain size um top surface on this project um sometimes you'll you'll see with a lot of the state roads um they you their their top surface is a little smoother um because they tend tend to use um not all the time but I've, I've found in some cases that they use uh the type four which is the three eighths inch nominal grain size so it's uh, you'll get a little bit of a smoother ride but um our 
data says, well, it's you can smooth the ride, but maybe not necessarily strong. Um, when you just think of it logically, larger stone is usually stronger than smaller stone. Um, so that's the difference between the type four and the type three. Um, you know, the type three tends to segregate a little bit more. Um, now, it, it, could this be something different? Uh, maybe. Um, that's sort of what I think it probably is. And I've talked to some other folks from Pike who've been doing this a lot longer than I have. Um, that's what they were thinking. Um, likely, uh, the scenario is um, if uh, you know, like I said, if if it's just if it's just on the surface, probably not an issue. Um, uh, like I said, other than a little bit of bumpy ride, that other than uh, um, yeah, it, it, but but what you're really concerned about is if it, it goes down deep into the asphalt. So what you don't want to have is you know moisture to get in there, leach into the asphalt, and the freeze thaw cycle happen more than what would normally happen in that. So it's always going to you're always going to get a little bit of leaching of the asphalt of um, moisture into the um, into the pavement surface. But um, if it happens really early, um, it could be and 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 that cracks and then expands and you get spider cracks everywhere. Um, That's what we're concerned that, about. You know. Yep. Yep. And that would be um, that would be a result of 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 kind of widespread um, potentially widespread uh, uh, segregation of the mix um, going deep into it, which we hope isn't the case. Um, right now, it's kind of hard to say. I think we'll have to get a good day. Um, where the road is dry, been dry for a few days, um, sunny day where you can just go see it. Um, those are few and far between this time of year, but um, I'd, I'd be happy to, um, you know, meet up with um, someone on the board and Ron and, and, and Mark, um, and I'd probably bring um, someone else from Pike um, who might might have some more insight on to, and to see what the, what the scenario is and, and how bad it is and whether it um, you know will require um, remediations or not. Okay, so uh, um, we just got to figure out when that time can be so we can uh, go and look at it. I'd like to be there, and uh, I don't know if uh, Mr. Bowman would like to be there or anybody else on the board there if they'd like to accompany us. But we just need to figure out those three. Uh, three days of dry weather or whatever yeah i mean there's no science here i just we want to get it so it's you know, the road is not covered in snow and it's the the surface is dry so you can actually see what's going on um i'm, I'm looking at the uh, forecast for the coming week and uh um it's sporadic snowfall for the next uh uh every other day just about yeah. There's going to be snowfall, they're saying, but uh, uh, maybe the salt put on it will clear it up so they can be seen. That's another thing. Those pores get get clogged with salt, and you can't really see it either. Um, um, I mean, no, I think you can. I think you can distinguish between the salt and the in the porous part. If we get there and we look at it, I think it yeah, will be sure. pretty obvious. Well, we can. We can at least. Um, you know, we can at least rule some things out. You know, sure. is it a, a major? Um, could it? Is it something else other than this segregation um, theory that I have, which is it just isn't uncommon at all. It's just, um, um, but you know, what would be a worse thing is if um, you know the mix got cold before it got rolled. Um, well, which can I add something? Yep. Uh, but when I noticed it, I was going down through, and like you said, it would been wet, and all of a sudden, dry rolls, and, and it, it goes smooth, and it goes from blotchy. The, the only way I can identify or explain it, which sounds stupid, but it is milk curdling. You know, okay. uh, uh, but one thing I did notice is, is what you said about is asphalt cold. It was thirty-seven degrees some mornings they were paving. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. I understand, or I have understood, but talking to people that you shouldn't pay below forty degrees. 
well, the rule of 40 degrees and rise it. They, not that is, hasn't been the case. And, and, and you had four or five trucks, you know, just waiting to go down at hauling from Irisburg, maybe. It, it's sitting uh, there. It, that's how it, it almost, we were hiring. It was it, it, we were hired from more St. Johnsbury area. Uh, but, it, but it almost appears to me, and I have no paper, I'll tell you that, that either the asphalt wasn't hot enough and they rolled it, or the roller weren't big enough to roll it down smooth. Because it, it's not just one section, it's all the way down through. And, and my concern for the taxpayers of Hyde Park is, like you said, there's water getting in there suddenly, expanding in, in a half inch hole, Next spring could be a three quarter inch hole or an inch yep. hole. In the following year, it could be a two inch hole. Yep. And we and just spent a lot of money on. Of we course. just spent a lot of money on that road. I want to protect the taxpayers on it. Absolutely, and ultimately, um, that's why we have a, a, a one year guarantee. Um, so in the spring, you'll you'll be able to tell whether it's breaking down further, um, and and if it is, then that's a problem, and and it'll be on the contractor's uh, obligation to, to fix it at no charge okay. um, but right now it's it i don't you know i can't really say oh we'll, we'll definitely go and repave it um but uh it, we got to do do the analysis first but i, I just want to make sure everyone knows that we're um you know we're going to be accountable oh i understand just want i just want to get everything out the open that uh, yep. it's recorded and, and yep and that's why we're having the meeting and i appreciate that um, I, I have a completely um, naive question. So when you go out and look at it, how, how do you know what you're looking for? How do you know? I'm just curious about the, the process you go through in evaluating what the, what the issues might be. Well, I, can, I can go out there and stand and look at the road and I couldn't tell you a damn thing. So <laughs> yeah. And and um, so, what is it that you're checking? Honestly, it's it's experience, and that and uh, and um, I, I it's partially why I'll probably bring someone who's been around longer, uh, Pike than I have, um, to do some of the very very detailed uh, analysis on it. Um, but um, you know, if it's if it's something that's um, you know a, a constructability issue, a, a big bump that's caused by a roller versus you know, cold mix come into the job or this this um, mix uh, segregation that I'm talking about. There's there's usually some uh, specific um, uh, features of it that'll catch your eye. Um, you know, or and another another potential um, uh, constructability or not. I mean. Um, uh, an error by the crew could be, you know, laying laying the mix too too skinny, um, which is then it won't effectively um, uh, won't effectively compact, um, and you'll know that once it starts to crack, you'll be able to see the the layer. Um, so there's various different things we look for, um, and uh, but like I said, ultimately in the spring. Is when really, if the major, if there's major issues, that's when it'll rear its head for for final, um, and that'll be plenty enough time to to do the repair. You wouldn't want to do it till then anyway. There's really nothing you want to do now. It's it just make it worse. Um, yeah, but you know, as long as you said you got a year guarantee on it, uh, there's really, to me, not much sense of looking at it now if you do nothing about it anyways this year. Sure. Maybe. Uh, but I'm happy to go and take a look at it closer, just so we have an idea of what's going on. It either way, it can't hurt, I suppose. Okay, whatever you whatever you want to do, long long that documented. Sure. Um, yeah, I can have a meeting on site um, and uh, shoot off an email saying what our thoughts were, and that we'll most likely uh, revisit in the spring. Right. I'd I'd. Uh... I'd suggest uh, with time that when that when you see that you're coming, just obviously let 
Mark and Ron and the other board members know and tell them what time it is and whatever board members can get there can get there as opposed to trying to coordinate around board schedules and, and what folks can do. Because as you say, I think, right, the, the biggie is, is going to be in the spring. But when you've got an idea when you're going to be there, if you let, um, particularly it's going to be, it's going to be, and Dave's right up there, it's going to be the three guys. I don't, I don't need to go look at a road. <laughs> I trust these three and you guys, you know, but to, but to get an idea of, of we don't need to all yeah. get hit by cars. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd be happy. I, I have, I typically communicate with, with Ron and, and, and Mark. Um, and now I do have, uh, somebody else's email, um, Brian, who, who sent yeah. those photos. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I can include him as well. Terrific. I'll try to send you some more contact information for myself too. Brett. Sure. sure. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, Brett. Yeah. We have yep. any more questions? Are we we set? Got a plan? Thank you. Thank you very much, Brett. Hope you and your family had a good time. We did. Thank you very much. <laughs> have, have a happy holidays. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It sounded like chastity. Yeah, can you guys hear me? There you go. Yep. yep okay. I got you. Yeah, I've been on. I just didn't want to interrupt, obviously. But yeah. Oh, okay. We got you there. Um Cassidy, do you have any any questions for Breton? Uh no, I'm all set. Okay. Okay. Next, um a town mask mandate. Since the um since towns have been given the the authority, um, I in the email I sent to all of you said I was happy to tip my hand and how I feel about it. I think oh, now with a new variant coming down the road, but we can always revisit it. I don't. I I personally think uh, that unless you sort of go to a statewide mandate, pushing this back on the towns doesn't make a lot of sense. I've also I find down we're down in Stowe three days a week, and we stop at at, uh, at two places at the bagel store that I get to get Bill's lunch, and in the fish store that's next to it. And they're both frequented by lots of locals and visitors, and they have signs up that just say, you know, whether you're vaccinated or not, um, we'd appreciate it if you'd wear a mask so we can protect our staff and we're protecting their families. And uh, you know, I think I think despite all the news you hear about the rest of the country, I think Vermonters are really being very respectful and very thoughtful. Um, you know, we just left the mask uh, requirement upstairs. Um, nobody's had any problems with that. The library, of course, and, and I know the libraries all over the state have just kept a, a uh, requirement for masks and nobody's had any problems with it. So I don't, I don't see any need to, do anything with this and and again depending on this variance got everybody a little a little nervous but um you know we'll see what happens hopefully it's a lot of nervousness and it won't be as bad as delta was but whatever it is we'll we can we can visit things at a later date if we feel that we need to so i don't anybody feel differently or want to add something or be on the record as how you feel about it just let the People of the businesses make up their own mind if they want to put a sign on their door. Yep. Yep, exactly. I concur. I agree as well. Okay. Um, uh, the excavator purchase. So I finally got hold of uh, Nick Minosh and are not in person. There's, uh, admin person, Lisa, uh, reached out on my behalf or, or on the board's behalf. And uh, uh, Nick has decided to, he changed his mind and he no longer wants to sell the uh, the excavate. So uh, um, uh, no reasoning that I'm aware of or anything like that. But uh, so I think we go back to uh, uh, the, the first thing we discussed was just try to see if we get an excavator that can come in and uh, to one of the dealers and see if we can get a deal on it. Yep. Okay. And um, we had um, 
I had thought that, and Brian, if you're free to participate, that's great, but that Ron and Mark could do the the checking with the dealers to see what they have and if we can uh, if we can get a good deal on a on a good used one um, and I would assume by now they probably all got what's coming back in they know what they have um, and if if uh, if nobody's got any if somebody yeah. has something that looks good probably do a quick phone call and do a quick to let everybody know and say okay this is what we should do if not, then to go ahead and order the new one because who knows when we're going to get that. Yeah. Right. I thought we had already decided all this at the last select board meeting because we knew Nick wasn't selling, and I thought we had agreed to start looking. Am I well, well, we were, but but another loop came around, and Nick said, "Okay, I think I am going to sell." <laughs> oh, got it. Yeah, this yeah. So, so Brian said, "Hey, we may have." And and Nick had just purchased um, an extended warranty that was transferable with the piece of equipment. Okay. So it was looking though we might be able to get a great deal. So so between that and really needing to have this conversation with Pike, and I said, "Well, we got the mask mandate. What the hell?" And we've got the 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 possible hiring you know i said let's we can do a, a a quick special meeting and get all these things out of the way so okay so we go we go back to square i think it's square 27 with the excavator which i just again i want to say you know roly that was i really think that was a great suggestion there may well be one out there looking for a looking for a nice home that will save the town some thousands of dollars and that would be great right Okay, phone phone and fiber upgrade. Ron. Wait a minute, you got that. Are you there, Ron? Email. No, I don't need that one, Pike. Hello. Hell, oh, there we go. Email. There so, it is. Throughout this last six months or so, we've been trying to figure out how to uh, provide multiple long-term improvements at the town office and town garage for internet access so we had um tech group who's our consultant go through all the computers and try to upgrade the security and in july we did half of the upgrades uh per the select board's request to phase it in next july 1st we do the final 50 percent or so of those security upgrades and they also highlighted a need to upgrade uh, some hardware. The uh, internet is not spectacular, but it's uh, just, it's sort of barely limping along under the Comcast agreement we have, which is a shared cable line. And uh, the phone system at the town office is not repairable anymore. It's, it's old enough that we don't have any parts and pieces anymore so to do all those things at once is sort of a package deal sort of, of fiber upgrade phone upgrade um, security upgrade and computer hardware upgrade so the only things we're talking about tonight uh, because the security upgrades have been talked about is the uh, fiber and phone upgrade now the uh, lamoille county um, lamoille fiber cud is proposing this Lamoille County's fiber upgrade, which will go after the um, rural areas and eventually, you know, it's probably in a five year window, potentially get to um, all the all the buildings and all the addresses if they're successful. The fiber upgrade at the town office is a little different. That will instead of having a shared fiber line, which is what most people will get. Uh, the town office, which potentially is a, an investment in that property to have a dedicated fiber line from the roundabout connection. And we've seen the, the consolidated communications trucks that are always yeah. at the yeah. roundabout. That's where the head end is for the fiber line. They would run a separate fiber down the edge of the road and come into the town property to connect the town garage and town office the village office as well as the public meeting room uh with the dedicated business fiber 
So timing of that is just like anything else. There's parts and pieces to be ordered. There's a contracts to be signed. And um, that's what I was going to go over tonight. So even though there's lots of detail to this stuff, I asked the, um, the broker for these services, which is, um, I don't know if you had a chance to read it, but Consolidated Communications is the phone company. And right now we're paying $605, $606 a month. And the new system is $320 a month, which is basically upgrading analog phones to a digital phone system. Digital phone systems allow people calling in to get immediately transferred to any phone, which we can't do now. Um, it also provides for video and audio connection, which we don't have now. And also provides through that savings, some of the costs for $100 a month, $94 a month on the uh, fiber internet. So that's that's the short story. There's uh, contracts to be signed to get the work order going. And Kim's been asking for the phone system upgrade because she has trouble putting messages on the machine right now where the phone system now resets to you know July 2019 messages and doesn't allow for even forwarding a call to you know, the village office, which is right there. So the proposal is to make basically those two changes the phone system upgrade with the phone uh, fiber connection upgrade and have that building set up for a very long time i don't think any but nobody's even thinking about what happens after a fiber connection uh, because it is the newer technology that has significant uh, capacity for the long term so, for example, if somebody wanted to run a internet heavy community meeting uh, in the downstairs, then we would have capacity while the office upstairs is operating. And then we won't have to worry about capacity for pretty much forever, anybody, as long as that building's there. If the town ever decided to sell the building, then that would also be a, a selling point to have that dedicated business fiber line to the building. Uh, other than that, I, I think the overall cost for both upgrades is the $94 a month additional cost, uh, basically to the phone, the phone bill. <laughs> so, What's the cost for the upgrade? Total cost. Uh, there's, gonna... Yeah, there's two upgrades, the phone system and the fiber upgrade. We're paying so much for consolidated that uh, for phone service that it covers the uh, $320 a month for the new telephone system because it's rental equipment so that can be upgraded easily. That's and nice. the savings of that, or the difference between our current costs and the future phone costs is about $285. And then that. Oh, there's no setup fee? Yes, I can show you the setup fees. The one time. Yeah, that's what I was going to lean. Yeah, there's it's, a one. It's on the, yeah. It's on the yeah. thing from the guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was pretty descriptive. It was, it was on the thing from the guy. That'll, that'll help you find it. <laughs> yeah, all right. It's the same way with Penny, I understand. <laughs> uh oh, that's scary. <laughs> I got, I got you. Yeah, I had those up. Yeah. The guy's name is Zoltan. Zoltan. Um, I'm remembering there's about $750 one time charge. Yeah, that would pan out over time. And then the recurring cost. So there's two, there's two charges. Well, it's the. I, I think one of the things when you get down to the bottom that's interesting is if the cell, you got to remember our telephone system that you can no longer fix, if it collapsed, it would cost us six to ten thousand dollars to replace it from nothing. You go, oh, okay. Yeah. That, that digital telephone, we, we had that in the last part of the, the company in my previous life. 
And that, that is well worth it because somebody could call in and say, uh, boy, I'd like to speak to Sue Bartlett. You, you could be down the, the installed with Bill and all they can do is push a button and it goes straight to you. Just so it's like like sit in the office. Uh, you can yeah. set up your voicemail just for, for select men. Each one of the select pieces of code, if somebody had a complaint or, mm -hmm. or wanted to talk something about the select board, they could go right directly to a uh, select board vo voicemail. Yeah. And yeah, you check. I, yeah. You check. Go ahead. Sorry, Brian. Did you check with Xfinity too? I'm just. Uh, um, you probably already did that leg work, and this was a cheaper one. Yeah, that's uh, we hired. We didn't. We didn't hire Zoltan, but he's the one that works with Tech Group uh, to yeah. set up businesses with this kind of stuff because it's relatively complicated to work with all the different providers. So they they recommend this phone system. They recommended the fiber line with consolidated because it's right there, and it plus it has the long term uh, growth that we don't have to worry about the hardware line coming into the building anymore. Uh, so there's a training component to this um, cost. So this seven hundred and thirteen dollars is the setup for the phone system itself with training and how to use the phone on the consolidated I'm, I'm re remembering they weren't significant it was a one-time charge because they roll most of the charges into your monthly fee and they probably got a tech support too yeah consolidated well and uh, i think once that lines in i think there's a three to six month build now right you know trying to catch the end of winter before it gets too bad and then maybe have to wait till spring anyway but you have to put your order in to get it started So the the question is is to uh, complete the uh, fiber line upgrade and the telephone system upgrade. Authorize me or Susan to sign the necessary paperwork to get the thing ordered and moving. What's do do we have? I think somebody asked before. Sort do we have a um. It's like a setup fee. Do we have some one-time costs that we need to cover? And is this stuff? I I would think that the ARPA money may could be eligible for. Yeah. That, well, that's the that's the question. So I, I definitely anything broadband is ARPA reimbursable reimbursable stuff. So if we the phone system itself possibly, I just don't know if it's a hundred percent. So. I know the, the broadband extension line, I think you can take your initial plus four or five years. Eventually that will be not funded by ARPA because it's an ongoing cost. Um, right, right. I was just thinking of, yeah, if, if, right. If you got one time setup costs and those sorts of things as opposed to ongoing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's what, I think the, on, the one time cost and then they can be paid by ARPA. These ongoing costs, we might be able to get three to four or five years, and then the town taxpayers would take it over. Right. So we'll we'll maximize that to answer your question. We'll max we'll maximize that option. Whoops. Okay. People got any questions? We're going to be dragged into high tech whether we want to go or not. <laughs> Cassidy, got any questions? Where's this guy? On the five. Okay, I guess um, Roly, Brian, Dave. No questions. No, I don't. Okay. Well, I guess I guess I need a motion to go ahead and have, let ron or myself or we can pick somebody else to sign them if we want you know sure <laughs> i don't want to have all the fun i'll make a motion to 
what am I making a motion for? To go ahead for you to sign the paperwork. Yeah, the contract. The <laughs> contract, yeah. contract it, right? Oh. I knew what I wanted to do. I just wasn't sure how to say it. Oh. Yeah, it's the two things. It's the fiber line extension from the roundabout and the new phone system. Yep. That. Okay, need a second? Who's she authorized for signature? I didn't catch that. Oh, I'm not. I'm going to let Susan do it. She, she <laughs> likes to do all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we got a second someplace. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do this or not. I don't care for consolidated. Brian Rowley, you wanna do this? You wanna leave things the way they are? What's your decision? I'm myself. I'm still trying to figure out. Uh, and you asked if there was any more questions, and and uh, I just I don't know enough about it. I guess for myself, that's why I'm kind of hesitant myself. But uh, um, well, that's David what, said, David, you have said it. Rolly, what about you? I really don't know that much about it. I mean, it's there other. I'm not like you when it comes to the roads on that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, this is like, yeah, okay. That's, that's well, I'm <laughs> yeah, remember, we couldn't get our uh, our laptops or uh, tablets here going tonight. So, <laughs> as, as I say, we're just we're being dragged forward. <laughs> it's not that we just don't we don't know any better. We don't know any. That, that's why I think having Ron having worked with this guy because he comes out and he works with folks exactly like the town that is you know here's here's and, and instead of trying to deal with five different and figuring it out he comes up and sort of says here's your options here's what you can do um and, how, long, and, how long ago was our, our phone system we got put in here did they remember oh god exactly yeah. why it needs to be upgraded when no one can remember when it was installed that probably means it needs well, and the fact that you can't repair it anymore. Yeah. The exactly. it, right? What is now hardwire on? Yeah, the analog cut the analog wiring comes in from the street and yeah. runs into a rat's nest in the basement, which nobody knows how many times the wiring's been cut or patched or whatever. So it's really not the best wiring system now. Okay, okay, so, okay, so just put it to cut and dry right now. What does our phone system cost us per month? Um, well, the, the summary, because I asked the consultant to distill the right. whole thing down, was that the fiber upgrade and the phone system upgrade, the, the two upgrades, is $1,100 a year increase. So $100, $100 a month increase. Yeah. Over, yeah, well, it's 90, over, 90, yeah, 94 yeah. or something, yeah. Right, over what we're paying now. Right, yes. to get everything new, upgraded, and probably good for at least the next 10, 12, 15 years. Yeah, now, I, I agree with somebody said if that goes down, it's going to cost us, you know, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 just to come in and toggle it up, and you'll still have a hardwire system. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can read so a little bit. Get it over with. Like Second one? Right? Yeah. Dave? What's that? So let's just make a motion and go for it because if it can't well, be I got the motion. I just, all I need is a second. All right. You got a second. Okay. So, so all, all, all in favor signify by saying aye. I think we probably have a lot of shrug of our shoulders on this one. <laughs> aye. Aye. Uh, Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? <laughs> I'm not sure. Dave, Dave, okay, so we've got it. I think Dave's telling me that we install it and now they can get me on my cell phone anyplace. And I'm not sure if that's a good upgrade or not, but. <laughs>
okay. Okay. Oh, we got. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let me see. You got now. Let's um. We, we probably run. We should probably go into executive session to talk about our hire or potential hire. Yeah, personnel matters. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So, need a motion to go into executive session. Second. We got it. Second. Okay. Ryan, you got a you got a motion for us. Yes, I I move that we uh, allow Susan to uh, um to <laughs> what was the candidate? No, we don't know names. Number one candidate. Negotiate a letter. Negotiate a letter of hiring the number one candidate. Negotiated. Yep. Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, I'll get Rod and Chastity to help me with it. <laughs> Super. Um, the only, let's see, other, the uh, the North Hyde Park Fire Department meeting is set for next Monday um, up at North Hyde Park. And I have a civil board of authority and we got a couple of people coming in with tax stuff. So. I cannot go next Monday, but but you guys can go. Yeah, I think uh, Kim was just on uh, next Monday. If Susan and Kim can talk about a quorum for the VCA. Yeah, I thought Kim told me she needed a quorum for that one. Yeah, but yeah. it's made up. It's made up of more than the select board, though. So I think oh, she's, yeah. she's, she's counting oh, yeah. heads. Yeah. You, you may have to split your membership a little bit. Yeah, we can we can usually scrounge up enough people to uh, um to get there. So anyway, just put that in the back of your. I'm speaking for Kim now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. So anybody have anything else? You good? Yes, I do. So yeah, I was talking to Howard Minosh this uh, during the week, and we got talking about the gravel pit. And yep. I got Howard to commit that he would sell us at 25 acres up there, or 24 plus or minus, okay. for, uh, for $250,000. Uh, I asked him about the payment. He said he would take it over a 10-year period. Okay. Now, now, I think that's something we should seriously consider putting on the, the uh, town meeting ballot because absolutely, take 15, 20 years from now, yep. gravel is going to be a commodity absolutely uh now uh to help pay for it tim stearns with high sea mower leases that and we won't need that gravel pit for years right for so many years so we could still lease it to him and, and recoup a little bit of money i don't know how much they get from it but i think that's a perfect perfect place for us to put a gravel pit right next to us Oh yeah. Oh, I agree, Dave. I agree. But, but before we, I mean, I think we should put it on the ballot. Would the town be willing to to yep. spend the two hundred fifty thousand dollars for ten years? And between now and then, I'll go and get Howard to give me a board test, so we know what's in there for yep. gravel. Yep. Yep. And then and 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 again, we we can uh, you know we can have a plan with then we can work with high mowing. Here's what is so you know here's what a yearly payment would be and here's how much we can cover with leases until we actually need it yeah good boy right now jericho and essex center and stuff they're hauling all the way from natos oh yeah yeah and, and i was talking to amy here this winter and he said he figures they got another 15 years okay so there you have it okay i think i think that that's terrific Okay, over now. Anything else? 
No. Roley, Brian? No. We're all set? Okay. I guess motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Got a second? People want to stay. Roley stays warmed up now. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe now all in favor signify by saying aye we'll go we're we're adjourned aye. 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 maybe when we get all this new high speed stuff we'll all be able to work that right good night everyone good night good night Bye. everybody stay warm <laughs> <laughs>